here. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. We're glad that you've joined us for the Easter devotional series. Uh, take out your Bibles. Uh, we're going to look at John chapter 12. And uh, while you're doing that, I hope you and your family are, and friends are doing all well. As uh, we are getting a little uh, stir crazy in the house and not being able to go out, but um, all is well at the Steel Home, and I hope all that is well for you. So uh, I'm going to read this passage. And then I'm going to look at um, some applications, some thoughts about uh, those passages there. So uh, let's begin with a word of prayer, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> Father, as we come to you this holy week, help us, Lord, to um, center our minds' attention and our hearts' affections on your great love for us, that you would send your son Jesus that, to die for us and be risen again, is an amazing, an amazing truth, an amazing story. And we just celebrate Easter this week and each and every day as we come before you. Let your word speak to us and enlighten us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, we're at uh, John chapter 12. <clears throat> Don't mind the allergies. Uh, this is a very familiar passage. Um, it's uh, well known, so I'm just going to go ahead and read from John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was about to betray Jesus, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for, about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you have always with you, but you do not always have me. And when the large crowd of Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also they wanted to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well. Because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. So here's our passage, and I just want to share some thoughts with you. Three uh, points, very simple. Come to dinner, uh, come to worship, and come to believe. Come to dinner, come to worship, and come to believe. The first part is come to dinner. So six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus had been dead, had you know where he'd been raised. Now, this uh, place, Bethany, is not that far from Jerusalem, and I think just this first part about come to dinner, they're going to have a celebration. They're going to have a celebration dinner, a festival, a feast, or whatever in this home because Lazarus has been raised from the dead. And I, as I read over this passage and I started thinking about some of the things, it, it's like the Passover is only six days away, and I don't know about your home, but when it's Christmas time, we're already cleaning up and getting prepared for one major, you know, big dinner, family dinner, or celebration on Christmas. But here we went with the fact that, oh my goodness, uh, they're going to have this huge feast and celebration just six days before. So this is no small thing. And who's going to be there? Let's think about that for just a moment. It's Jesus, who is... Um, obviously garnered a lot of people talking about him because he publicly raised Lazarus from the dead. And there is Lazarus too, and he's there. And um, it's pretty amazing that uh, Lazarus is going to be at this meal and with his two sisters. Now you remember when Jesus uh, came to raise Lazarus, Mary and Martha ran out to meet him, and they're the other actors or the other characters in this story. And, um, you know, 
Jesus comes to this celebration, so come to dinner. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that if Jesus certainly knew what was about to take place, that his time had come, that the time had been fulfilled. So just thinking about that, um, he knew what was coming. I'm not sure I would want to go to a, a festival or a, a something like this. I'd be kind of stressed out. I think most of us would be uh, overwhelmed with anxiety. Yet he was composed enough to, uh, you know, come and celebrate with his friend Lazarus and all his other friends. And the other thing I had a thought about was just the fact that, you know, in our cultural norm, we usually have the, the, the big meal after a funeral. <clears throat> a lot of times we'll have a funeral here at the church, and then we'll come over <clears throat> and have a meal together. And how amazing it is. Now, this has kind of been reversed because this is a resurrection meal, and uh, what a celebration this is. This, this person was dead, and now he's alive. And that should be excitement enough <laughs> alone that Lazarus is going to be there, but not only that, that Jesus is going to be there. And so, uh, you know, I was thinking about this, and I thought about the hymn, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. So, so come to dinner. There's a, a big celebration. It's at Bethany. Uh, all of Jesus' close friends are there. And let me share an aside here. There's a great book out by Frank Viola called Jesus, God's Favorite Place on Earth. It's a great read, it's an easy read, and it talks about Bethany, and it actually has this particular um, episode uh, in that, uh, where Frank uh, writes about it. So it's quite a great book and a quick read. So um, you've got come to dinner, Martha's bringing out the best dishes, the best tablecloths, all that stuff, and Jesus is a guest of honor. He's probably gonna be, be fed first and the mood is festive and joyful and thankful. So this comes to the second part, which I think is probably the heavier part of this passage, which is simply this, come to worship. In those days when a guest entered the home, usually the guest's feet were washed with water and then the guest's head might be anointed with a little dab of oil or perfume. And it wasn't all that unusual to uh, wash someone's um, feet, but here, Mary does something very interesting. She does it in the middle of the meal. So just kind of get your head wrapped around. This is a beautiful, beautiful uh, festive meal, uh, you know, holiday meal celebrating uh, Lazarus' resurrection. And right in the middle of it, when the, the second round of ribs are being passed around, just kidding, um, you see that she brings out this pound a pound of this expensive perfume and she she breaks it she breaks it open and she sits at Jesus feet and she just pours it on his feet and not only does she do that but she wipes it with her hair she lets her hair down which in their culture uh, women Jewish women would never let their hair down in public <clears throat> they might let it down as they're preparing to get dressed or robed at home, but never in public like this. So as you can imagine, with the, the apex of this celebration, we've come to worship now. Mary has come to sit at the feet of Jesus. She's brought this. It, it, this thing costs probably uh, a year's wages. They say 300 denarii or about 300 days of, of um, you know, pay in that day. And she, she has just broken it and just spilled it all over his feet. And uh, she lavishes her love, and she's just quiet. She's not talking. She's simply sitting at the feet of Jesus, and she's pouring this out. And it's such an unselfish, such an intimate gift for Mary. And there's no expense spared, and there's no, this humble act of devotion is, is a beautiful picture of her heart that she loves the Lord Jesus Christ, and she's exposing her true motives. And as you're going to see in the next moments as Judas and the, the crowd respond, it also exposes their true motives. I love this quote from Spurgeon I found. It said, you and I must sit at his feet, at Jesus' feet, or we will never anoint them. And he, meaning Jesus, 
must pour his divine teaching into us or we will never respond by pouring out a precious offering upon him. Some food for thought as we uh, continue in our Bible study here. Now the next page uh, of notes here, Judas, um, Judas responds and um, <laughs> it's not good. And he, he belts out this, this awkward moment. I mean, obviously the smell is permeating this house right in the middle of this meal. Everyone's tuned in. And Judas, Judas finally is the first, kind of the first person that kind of speaks up when there's this awkward silence and stuff. And he says, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? And the scripture goes on and says he didn't care about the poor, but he just wanted the money. So, um, you know, Judas breaks that silence uh, with his sort of warped sense of financial values. And he's obviously blinded to what, what God is up to in this moment and, and certainly what Mary is trying to do. And you think about the contrast between the fragrance and the loving surrender of Mary's devotion to him right now and then his betrayal in just a few days. It's stark, isn't it? And uh, Jesus defends Mary and explains exactly what she did. And he, um, as he come, if you come to worship, Jesus says, look, leave her alone. She's done this for my burial. Now, I, I don't know if it's women's intuition or God's prompting through the Holy Spirit, but I, I have a sense that Mary realized um, this week was going to be um, something uh, life-changing. Maybe she, she had a sense, maybe she even sensed it in Jesus that he was anxious more so than normal because uh, she, she does this beautiful act. And uh, of course, uh, Jesus um, rebukes Judas and says, look, uh, she's done this for my burial, which everyone's kind of like, uh, this is supposed to be a, <laughs> a resurrection party you're talking about burial and, and death and all that stuff again they're, they're probably confused and I, I think it's also good to note that uh, once the, the kind of the negative Nancy uh, Judas jumped in I'm sure some other disciples and, and different people uh, speak up and they also are like well uh, he's right you know without really thinking about the consequences of, of what they're uh, responding to I want to take a note here and just remind you all that, uh, you know, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, they all have different narratives and different perspectives written by different writers. And yet um, there are some, if you've seen those charts, where they have all the miracles or all the scenes and, that happen in all four. And this is one of those. It happens in every single uh, synop synoptic gospel and the gospel of John. And uh, I think it's important that we, this, this thing is hard to forget because uh, one of the, the things that, that happens in humanity is that we, when we smell something, that's one of the strongest memory um, uh, instincts that we have if we we will remember a smell before we'll remember details of a specific incident but those two combined in this uh, lets us know that uh, this this had an impact and it shows up in all four Gospels everyone remembers uh, this story and then Jesus says this which I think is the most beautiful memorial here he says wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world what this woman, Mary, has done will also be told as a memorial to her. So Mary's spot on. She's come to worship. She's broken. She's spilled out like the, the famous gospel song. She's taken this, this uh, beautiful spice, a pound of it, and just overkill here to uh, anoint Jesus' feet. And then finally, we come to um, the final part is come to believe. And... Uh, here, I think just what I want to do in closing is just that bec um, the chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Now, a lot of the chief priests were Sadducees and um, 
strikingly, they didn't believe in the resurrection. So <laughs> Lazarus being here is a real problem for their theological, their flawed theological understanding. And uh, this is an embarrassing problem. So they've got to figure out what's going on. And I think God is using all of these incidents to ramp up the chief priest into a frenzy to, uh, as a providential God over all time, over all things, he's going to bring this, this crucifixion to a head uh, this week. Um, and I just love, on account of Lazarus, many of the Jews went away that day and believed in Jesus. Um, it's, it's quite amazing that um, there he is right in the middle of this party and no one can deny it. And they're coming up and they're talking with him and they're asking him questions and he's responding. And uh, it is just, it, it's almost surreal that this is really even happening. <clears throat> and I want to say many people believed uh, but not everyone believed because obviously the, the chief priests and the scribes uh, were not following Jesus' lead here or believing in what he said or did, even with the obvious, the obvious reality that he is <laughs> raised the dead. This man's been dead for four days and he raised him. But it made me think of the parable of Lazarus that's found over in Luke. And I just want to read the last part <clears throat> where... Um, the rich man says this thing, uh, I beg you therefore, Abraham, Father Abraham, that you would send him, Lazarus, the, 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 the poor beggar who, who begged for food, to my father's house, for I have five, five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said back to the rich man, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But Abraham responded, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. I think that's self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> here you, they, they have Moses and the prophets, the chief priests and all the people of, of all the Jews, and yet uh, someone has risen from the dead and um, they don't repent. So who do you relate to in this passage? Just a couple of thoughts as we close. Are you like a Martha who's uh, giving glory to God for the great blessings of raising her brother from the dead, inviting friends over to a big celebration where she joyfully and heartily is making it a memorable occasion for all people? Are you Lazarus? Maybe you've been born again, or maybe your life's been radically changed. You're a living testimony that God can make the dead come back to life. Or maybe you're like Mary who quietly surrendered and just hunkered down at Jesus' feet and offered her, his, her extravagant gifts and her amazing love, just all that she had. Um, she, she held no expense back because she trusted in Jesus. He had raised her brother from the dead. Why wouldn't she trust this man, this uh, Jesus of Nazareth? Or maybe you're Judas, and maybe you're criticizing those who are ministering around Jesus. Um, some of us do criticize, maybe too much. So come to dinner, come to worship, come to believe. An amazing story of the radical all-out worship and the outcomes that still, in memorial, reverberate through time. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray now that this passage, this Bible study will draw us closer together, that will draw us closer to you this holy week, that you, we will feel your presence and we will understand your great love for us, that you gave Jesus and this holy week is going to just every single day bring us a step closer to worshiping you and, and loving you and living for you. I pray for our church, our pastor, for all of our church members and family and friends. Bless us and keep us safe in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me, and God bless you this week as um, we celebrate Holy Week. Thanks.